But I think that the, the deep value of food sovereignty tours is that they're, they're intensely personal. Um, so it's a way of learning and sharing and discovering, um, which is, you know, it's very somatic. You, have, you invest your whole self in it. It's an adventure. And you go beyond what you usually do. It's not something that you read in books. You can prepare, you can read about the trip that you're going on, whether it's Italy or the Basque Country, or Mexico, Bolivia, or Cuba. Um, but nothing really prepares you for being face-to-face um, -face with other people who um, are might be maybe very interested in you, but also might really want to question you. Might want to question your government. Might want to question, why are you on this tour? You know, why are you really here? Um, and, and that's, I think, what uh, healthy human beings do when they visit other places. And I think that the problem with tourism in general is that it's become a very voyeuristic experience. And so you go and, and you're, you pay to have a, a product given to you that you can see and experience vicariously in some way. And then the, so the, the tension between this voyeurism and actual solidarity, human solidarity, is what food sovereignty tours has to deal with. Um, because the fact is, we take these tours, we go to all these different places in the world, and um, but, you know, there's a political purpose. And people come onto the tours because of that political purpose, which is to build food sovereignty. But they also want to go beyond their own experience. They want to ex do something new. They want to eat good food, they want to drink good wine. They want to meet somebody interesting. Maybe they want to fall in love. You know, I mean, all these reasons why you go on a tour, and it's all fine. Um, but what makes it a food sovereignty tour is that we're trying to build a food sovereignty. Tour. So all these things are great. They're human. They're what we do as human beings. But the other thing we need to do as human beings is to change the food system. Like we change the whole system. And to do that, we need to build a powerful movement. A movement which is well informed, not just in practice, in the, in the practices you might share, like a compost team, but also in ideas, in ideology, in politics, and these types of things. And I think that's where there's just this tremendous value in these tours because the political informing which can take place on these tours by people who are not necessarily, you know, who are not politicians, but who are deeply engaged in social change. I think that has tremendous transformative value. The other key lesson that we learned in the Basque Country, we had a chance to visit the Mondragon Clubhouse. So Mondragon is a, a town in the Basque region. And it's the home of the Mondragon Cooperative. Corporate Association. They have, through the um, inspiration of a priest named uh, Paris Mendy, he uh, started working with the uh, Basque workers that needed jobs in the, I think the 50s, maybe the 60s. And they formed worker owned cooperatives, and they have, I think, over 80 or close to 100 cooperatives now. Those are all independently owned businesses owned by the workers. And they produce everything from airplane engines to heavy equipment of other kinds to a grocery uh, chain, farms, dairy farms, etc. etc. We had a chance to meet with one of the executives who gave us a, a, an overview of the Mondragon cooperative system. And what was particularly impressive was the fact that at that time, one of their largest cooperatives was going out of business. They had failed. They had not succeeded in the world market for appliances. And yet, all the workers in that large cooperative were being 
transferred to jobs in other cooperatives, jobs that they could choose, or they were retired. They were retiring, and they could benefit from the social services program that the Mondragon Cooperative Association maintains for all the cooperatives. It was very inspiring um, to feel, if you will let me use that word, that spirit of cooperation and mutual support and aid, something that we don't have in this country. And I came back pretty convinced that when we started, I was just ready to start the pond, that I wanted it to become a local owned cooperative, which it is. And that I wanted the stores that we create to be local owned cooperatives, which they will be. And uh, we're getting very heavily involved with the, I don't know what you call the, the, uh, like the cooperative ecosystem here in the Bay Area. So, going into the food sovereignty choice, that was something I thought about a lot. And, you know, are we going to, am I going to be able to make sure Food First has done a lot of the infrastructure to make sure that these are meaningful trips, but are we going to make sure that that really happens? And I think that the way in which it was able to happen and the degree to which it was able to be a really meaningful exchange is that the people who came were very, very, very invested in learning and in taking specific experiences home and just paying attention. So it's really kind of a simple thing, but just this very legitimate interest in bringing experience back was something that was really profound to see. Actually, one of my favorite memories from the trip is, I think this was instigated by your dad, Mackenzie. So Mackenzie's parents on the trip also. And I think totally innocently, he asked one of the farmers, the conference, yeah. So we went to see this farm in a province called Matanzas that is really well known. I was actually a little skeptical to visit it. It's kind of a, it's kind of famous. I thought maybe it's a little cliche to go there. But as it turned out, they were kind of sick of getting groups there who didn't really care that much about farming. And so they were thrilled to have us there. And it was a really special experience for them, I think. And when Mackenzie's dad just said, huh, how do you make compost work? Mine isn't going so well at home. He launched into this like massive explanation of how to make this bulk quantity of compost using beneficial microorganisms. And we were all like jotting down notes. And I was trying to translate for the people who didn't speak Spanish. And later, the people who were farmers were all taking the notes down so they could go back home and do it. I still want to do it, though it would be ridiculous to do it for a tiny little garden. Maybe we should do it for the guild track. <laughs> um, but so moments like that, I think, were really special in a way that was not just about transmitting a piece of information, but made people feel like there were opportunities to kind of grow and spread agroecology. So that's kind of my reflection on how the Cuba trip that I've been on had some sort of hope for being both personally transformative and giving this little spark for people to make maybe long-term connections, maybe some sort of long-term collaborations, maybe feed into some kind of broader political movement. 